Jim, you wrote a couple of books. Uh, one, you know, called Investment Biker. What was that book about, and and why why did you end up writing? Uh, firstly, tell us the story of how that came about. Well, all my life, or most of my life, I had wanted to go around the world, and I wanted to go around the world on a motorcycle. I have been driving motor scooters and motorcycles since I was 14 years old, and love them. It's a wonderful experience. It's exciting, and I want and I always wanted to see the world. Right. So put two and two together. Right. The best way to see the world for me would be to go around the world on a motorcycle. I finally did it. Uh, the problem was it took a long time to get permission to drive through the Soviet Union. Okay. It took a long time to get permission to drive through Red China, right. as it was called back then. But finally, I got permission for these things, and so off I went uh, did to you see do the this world. Alone or? No, I, I went with uh, my then girlfriend. Uh, she, she and I both took off, and we both made it around the world. Okay. And, and so what, what did that journey teach you? <laughs> First of all, it, it taught me the, uh, perhaps one of the most important things about life is that we're all the same. It doesn't matter if we have different color skin, different languages, different foods, different religion. It's astonishing that we all want the same things for our children, the same things for our lives. And it also taught me that most people in the world are afraid of other people. I would go here and they would say, well, where have you been? I'd say here. They, oh, they say, those are terrible, dangerous people. And they said, where are you going? I said, we're going here. Oh, you're going to get killed if you go there. Of course, when I got there, they said the same thing. But if everybody would go to dinner together or drink beer together, whatever they want to do, or watch football together, you know, they would find out we're all the same and there wouldn't be many wars. You know, wars are caused by failed politicians, not by people like you and me. I don't want to kill anybody and my children don't want to kill anybody, but politicians seem to get pleasure out of getting into fights. Were there other lessons that you picked up uh, on this trip? Well, I also, although the people need, uh, well, how to survive, but also that uh, people have a, most people have a deep need for some kind of spirituality. Uh, religion has been around for thousands of years, yeah. and everybody needs, uh, it seems to be, most people need some kind of spiritual dimension to their lives. At least they always have, and no matter where you go, people have wanted a spiritual dimension, and they get one. Now, there have been many different religions throughout history, but it's still people do need that element in there. And did in you the find your, in, a, in some, some form of a, in a religion or whatever it is, uh, while on this trip? I found my inner peace. Inner I, peace didn't, I didn't suddenly become a Buddhist or yeah, become a Christian a or a Muslim <laughs> or, a, or a Hindu or anything. You I, found inner peace. I certainly became more satisfied with myself mm. and, and the world, yes. Okay. Uh, you also wrote Adventure Capitalists and Hot Commodities, right? Uh, what were those books about? Well, having gone around the world on a motorcycle and spent two years doing it, I realized it wasn't enough. It didn't, it didn't satisfy my desire for adventure enough, so I decided I wanted to do it again, uh, and I wanted to do it at the turn of the millennium, right. because nobody's ever driven around the world at the turn of a millennium. Wow. Okay. Or if they did, they didn't write a book <laughs> yeah, about it. Yeah, Nobody yeah, knows yeah. they did it. So I set, set out to do that, uh, and I spent three years, the three years, 1999, 2000, 2001, and I wrote a book about that because I want the people, certainly in the year 3000, to look back and say, ah, oh, this is what it was like last time around. Right, right. And maybe next time, 10 people will drive around the world at the turn of the millennium. Uh, hot commodities came because my publisher kept saying, you're always talking about commodities and there are no books about commodities. Yeah. So when he told me there were no books about commodities, I said, okay, I'll do one. Yeah. He said, you're always talking about it. Why don't you write right. it down? So. So I did. Did you enjoy writing? Well, I don't really write in the sense that most people do. What I do is I sit and I tell the story. Okay. Uh, I dictate it and I tell the story uh, and then we transcribe it and edit and edit and edit. Yep. And many people say that my books, gosh, it sounds just like you. Mm. Well, the reason it sounds like me because that's what I did. I, t I told the story rather than wrote, wrote the, story. the story. All right. And I think I'm probably better at telling a story than maybe other ways. Let me, let me ask you a few qu uh, questions of advice. If I'm a young college grad and I just graduated from university and just came out, what advice would you give me? It's extremely important. The only advice I would give you is to figure out what your own passions are, no matter what it is, and then pursue your passions. Don't listen to me or your teachers or your parents. If they say you should go and become a dentist or a lawyer and you could care less about any of that, you do what you, if you want to be a gardener, 
Now, your professors are going to say, you can't be a gardener. You just got out of university. Your parents are going to be mortified. But if you really love gardening, you should become a gardener. First of all, you're never going to go to work. You're going to wake up every day very happy. You can hardly wait to go and have fun. And you, someday you're going to be the gardener at Buckingham Palace. And someday you're going to be the gardener at, at the White House. And someday you're going to have a chain of shops all across Southeast Asia. And you're going to be listed on the KL Stock Exchange. You're going to be the richest person in Southeast Asia. Because all you did was love, do what you were loved. You just went and had fun. Those are the people who are most successful. And those are the people who, even if they aren't terrible great successes, they're never unhappy, yeah. that's for sure. Is that what you did also in life? Yeah, that's exactly what I did. I mean, I didn't know that. I didn't know that's what I was doing. I didn't know about the financial markets when I was 21 or 20. I knew nothing. I stumbled into this job, realized, oh boy, this, they'll pay me to, to know what's going on in the world. I, I just cared about what was going on in the world. It's one reason I drove around the world twice, yeah. to see the world. And then all of a sudden they'd pay me, and they'd pay me a lot of money if I did it well. So that was my passion. I knew perfectly then what, it, what I was going to do, and I did it. If I'm a CEO of an organization, um, and what advice would you give me? Well, what I would, my best advice is to make sure you're focused on, on the future. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about the past, because whatever's happened in the past is finished. Now you've got to figure out what's going to happen in the future, especially if you have, well, if you have a small company or a big company, because many big companies have disappear, have just folded up and gone, uh, and many small companies have disappeared. The ones that survive and grow are the ones that see how the market is changing, and those are the ones that have passionate CEOs who love what they're doing and go in the direction, and usually, frequently, they're laughed at or scorned or ridiculed because they say, how, how could you do that? He who laughs last, laughs best. Right, exactly. Now, final, I mean, uh, what if I'm a HR director and I'm in charge of people? Uh, what advice would you give me? I would find the ones who definitely want to be in your company and know why they want to be in your company. The people who are just looking for jobs, I would ask them to go to another company. Now, it means you may have to interview a lot of people, but the people who come to your company and know about your company and know about your industry and have done some homework, you know, and know what you do. You know, many people just come in and want a job and they don't even know what the company does. Or they don't know much about it. But the ones who have done their homework and done their research and are prepared, that's what I want. Luck goes to the prepared mind. I mean, I'm not the first person to say that, as you know. I would want the people who demonstrate up front that they're motivated, smart, and have done their homework. Okay. A final piece of advice, I mean, for the general public. Uh, what advice would you give them, specifically in terms of investments or financial stability? Beware the boys. Beware the boys. <laughs> beware of the boys. Oh, beware of the boys. No, no, no. My, no, only invest in things that you know a lot about. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to the people you see on the TV or on the computer or in the, in the, in the media. Do what you know. Now, you know a lot about something. Everybody watching this show knows a lot about something, whether it's fashion or cars or sports. Stay with what you know, find the investments that you already know a lot about, and that's how you get rich. Following every tip you read about in the press is going to send you to the poorhouse very quickly. Well, Jim, thanks a lot for your time. We really appreciate you My being pleasure. here. My pleasure. I'm uh, delighted. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. We have Jim Rogers here on the Leader Around Mix Show. See you next week. <laughs>